today I'm going to talk about Thanksgiving, about being thankful. Isn't that weird? Eh? It's like, like, whatever gave me that idea? I don't know. But anyway, there it is. So I want to talk to you about thankfulness. But before I do, I, want to, I just want to raise up Israel right now. Everybody knows what's going on in Israel, I think. And if you don't, uh, you've missed it. Uh, there's a lot coming down on Israel right now. There's like there was over 3,000 missiles that were fired on Israel, and there was over 200 people that died and thousands that were injured, okay? Um, this is serious stuff, friends. Uh, we need to be taking this seriously. You know, it says in, in, in uh, Ecclesiastes that, that the, I believe it was, uh, maybe not Ecclesiastes, but it says in the Word of God that Damascus eventually will one day be wiped off the face of the earth, or at least it will become uninhabitable, all right? And it talks about this in the terms of the end times, all right, as to what is going to happen. And because God gives us signs as to what's going to take place. And in the word of God, it tells us that Israel is going to be a hated nation. People are going to be coming against them all the time. They are going to want to eliminate them, exterminate them. And we know that this has been going on for a long time, but we all know that it's going to come to an end, that God is going to end it, all right? So take heart, but we still pray for them. We still hold up Israel, all right? And, and this, is, this is why I want to mention this today, because it is very serious. Watch what's going on, okay? Keep, keep your heart positioned, and, 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 and keep your sights on God, and pray for Israel, all right? So, Father, just, we just lift up Israel right now. Lord, we lift up the, the leaders we lift up all the leaders in the world, Lord, that, that are uh, Israel's allies. Lord, we ask for wisdom and discernment in, in these leaders, Lord, that they would know uh, which direction to go in. Father, give them strategies, give them wisdom. And Lord, help them to know what direction it is that they, they need to go. Help them to, to decide uh, what it is that needs to happen. But Father, we pray, Lord, that their face be turned towards you. I pray, Father, that they will not forget you. Lord, that they will remember the God of Israel. That they will remember your promises. That they will remember what you say. And Father, we know that all of this is going to come to fruition. We know, Lord, that your word is true, yes and amen. And that, Father, you are going to do do what it is that you say you're going to do. And we stand in that truth right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just pray a protection over Israel right now. We pray a protection over the people there, over all the Jewish people, Lord. All, all the people there, Lord God, just protect them. Put a hedge of protection around them, Father. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for being true to your word. Lord, we believe in it. We know what it is. We know that what you say is true, and that it will come to pass. If you say it, Lord, that settles it. And Father, we stand in that right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray again for Israel, and we just ask, Lord, your blessings upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So keep them in prayer, my friends. Uh, we, we want to um, always remember what's going on over there. We, we're so far removed from everything here. We don't see it. It doesn't affect us like it's affecting them. But, it, but you know, that's why they need our prayers. Okay? So, okay. So today, I want to talk to you about Thanksgiving. I want to talk to you about being thankful, a heart of thankfulness. Um, there's something about Thanksgiving that is always very exciting for us, isn't it? Right? Let's be honest. We all love the turkey. We all love the ham. We all love the cranberry sauce. Well, maybe some of us do and some of us don't. But I personally love real cranberry sauce, not the kind you get in the can. If, you have, if you're eating the stuff that you get in the can... I'll be praying for you, okay? You need to be making real cranberry sauce, all right? Uh, maybe it's both. Maybe it's all of that, all right? But there's a, the, a getting together with family and friends. Um, these are all things that, you know, excite us about the holidays, but especially about Thanksgiving. One thing is for sure, and we've talked about this already, and we've sang about it, we're blessed. We are a blessed people. Amen? This deserves an amen, Okay. We're blessed. But what if you're going through bad times in life? What if things are difficult? What if you're having challenges in life? All right? 
It doesn't, what if God doesn't seem to be answering your prayers? Are you still blessed? Yes. Yes, yes we are. The truth of it is, is that, unfortunately, some of us don't feel blessed. All right? Because we're going through things in life, and we just don't feel that God is blessing us. All right? But he says we are, that he is, that we are a blessed people. And thanksgiving, for some, is more of a reminder of the things that we don't have as opposed to the things that we do have. Okay? So, what are we lacking in life, in other words? Or what are we struggling with? And these, these seem to be the things, the thoughts, that captivate our minds. It may be things like our finances. It could be things like our relationships. It could be even our health, because some of us are not in good health. All right? And we let those things fester in our minds, and they captivate us, and they remove. The th- it's almost like it, it pushes out the thankfulness that we should have in our heart, all right? It's really easy for us to look around and see what other people have, all right, and wonder why are they doing so well? Why do they seem to be so blessed, and yet I'm doing so poorly? Why don't I have all of those things that those other people have, like, like the stuff and the health and everything else? You know, we, all we have to do is look a little bit out there. You know, just, get, just, just look long enough and we'll see it because somebody has it better than us, right? If we look hard enough. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. And if we look long enough and hard enough, the problem is that it's crippling. It can become crippling to us. You see, we've been sold a message today that we're all supposed to be living in a beer commercial Okay? Do you know what the beer commercials are like? All right? Come on. All right. Okay. You real spiritual people that never watch anything like that. All right. Okay. Beer commercials. You know where the, where the, everybody's good looking. Everybody in the beer commercial is good looking and they all have nice teeth and they all, they all have a full head of hair, you know, and, and they all just look so happy. Like they're all standing around laughing and enjoying life and, the, and everything. Oh, yeah, they're always by a pool, okay? You know, there's always a pool and there's, you know, it's just like life is a beer commercial, right? Uh, the message is everywhere, all right? We see it all over the place. We see it in TV commercials. We see it on, the, on, on media everywhere, every type of media. And we see it on the billboards. We see it everywhere, all right? And it looks really, really, really good. And we look at that and we say, ah, oh, I want that. That's what I want. I want my life to be like that. And what do we do? We go out and we seek that. That becomes our, that becomes fixed in our minds. That becomes our go-to, okay? And then in our hearts, what do we do? We buy it. We purchase it in our hearts because that becomes the thing, that becomes the focus of our heart. Hook, line, and sinker. And then, do you know what we do? As I take a drink, you can think about it. We take a drink. Yeah, a beer, right? You know what we do? We take out the scale, all right? We get the scale out and we start to weigh our lives. All right? What is it that I have as opposed to what everybody else has? Okay? And that's what we do. We measure everything that we have. We measure our life. And all of our success, our failures, everything hangs in the balance of um, the, the, the promise of, that, of the beer commercial life. Okay? Having everything. All right? And we buy into it. The problem, of course, is that the beer commercial promise is the great deception. It's part of the great deception. We, have, we all have to have the best, all right, in life. We all have to have the best friends. We've got to have the best wife or the best husband. We've got to have the best children. We've got to have the best house and the best toys. And then we've got to have the best jobs. And we've got to have the best health. All right? Because if we have all of that, we're doing great. That's success in our, in our minds. 
And it all, on, on top of that, I got to say, it has to come to us easy, all right? We got to get it easily, all right? Uh, if we have to work at it, well, that's not good too, because now we're missing out, because all of our friends, they don't have to work at it. They just get it for free, right? Like, the, that's how it works in our heads, all right? Well, I'm here to tell you it's a lie, okay? It's a lie. It's a lie from the enemy, and it smells like smoke, all right? Believe me now, all right, or hear me now, believe me later. That's not how life really goes. And I'm not saying that we don't ever get some of these things, because we do. God blesses us. He does give us some of these things. But many, like, but here's the thing. We don't, we don't get all of them all the time. And sometimes we don't get to keep them. You see, life is like that. It's just, this, that's the reality of life. Okay, but that's not the point. The point is, what have we bought into? What is it that we've actually bought into? Our attitudes, okay, our demeanor, our language, how we speak, all point to the condition of our heart, okay? And they reveal the condition of our heart. They reveal what we have bought into. What is it that we have purchased in our heart and in our mind? What we have, what is it that we have decided that is important to us in life? But what does God say about it? What does God say about all of this? What does God say about what should be important to us in our life? In Matthew 6, 19, it says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Okay? So where is your heart? What's going on in the eye or the mind of your heart? Okay. Does that mean that we're not supposed to do or get things? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that whatever we have, whatever God has blessed us with, what do we do with it? We give it back to the kingdom of God. We, we say, okay, Lord, thank you very much. What do you want me to do with it? How do you want me to use this? How do you want me to go about this? You know, and then the Lord will instruct us, and he gives us instructions. And how does he do that? He does it not just by, through the Holy Spirit. He does it through the Word of God. All right? We're going to talk a little bit about that as we go on. All right? In other words, if the Holy Spirit says, open your home, you open your home. If the Holy Spirit says, lend out your vehicle, you lend out your vehicle. If the Holy Spirit says, uh, go, go help your neighbor, uh, you go and help your neighbor, all right? If he says, organize the food for the house of blessing, well, then you organize the food for the house of blessing. Where's Linda and Brad? Thank you, Linda, for doing that. If the Lord says, do the Christmas boxes for the children, then you do the Christmas boxes for the children, all right? Thank you, Debbie. Where's Debbie? Thank you, Debbie. So if the Lord says, I want you to cook the food for the church picnic, well, then you cook the food for the church picnic. Thank you, Alex. We thank, we, we're thankful for these things that God gives us that we can actually give back, and we do it. And we thank God for it. If he says, uh, sign up for snacks, all right, then we sign, up, we sign up for snacks. And we do it. Why? Because it helps the body. We get together. We congregate. We get, a, we, we get to bless one another. All right? So thank you all who have signed up for snacks because you're contributing to the kingdom of God. So let me add this. Even if the Holy Spirit doesn't personally, listen to this, if the Holy Spirit doesn't personally tell you or speak to you audibly, all right, to do something, does that mean that you don't do it? No, because you know what? The Word of God gives us instructions too. If people aren't doing things because they feel like they haven't heard from the Holy Spirit, well, i got to tell you something. You're probably not reading your Bible. 
Because the Bible gives us a lot. I know, I know. I'm like, Jerry, you're being so hard on me. <laughs> it's like, but yeah, I'm telling you, guys, read your Bible. It gives us instructions. It tells us what to do. So that we don't have to be always saying, well, well I'll, I'll wait for the Holy Spirit to tell me. Oh, when I hear the Holy Spirit, then I'll, I'll do snacks. You know, I'll, I'll go, that, that's the day I'll do it, you know. Uh, okay, all right, well, you do that, all right? But there won't be any snacks, all right? There will be, a lot of stuff isn't going to get done in the kingdom of God if that's, if that's all we're doing or if that's how we're doing it, all right? You see, even tithing, tithing is not a suggestion, it's a commandment. We don't need to wait for the Holy Spirit to say, tithe. We just, we say, okay, I'm going to tithe. Why? Because the Word of God says to tithe. All right? So we listen to what the Word of God, of word, the word of God says. Um, if, we, if, if it's helping our brethren, then what do we do? We help our brethren. Do we, do we have to wait for the Holy Spirit to say, uh, you know, your, 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 your elderly neighbor needs help shoveling his driveway? No, you go out there and help your elderly neighbor shovel his driveway. Why? Not because the Holy Spirit told you to, but because the Word of God told you to. He says, look after each other. We, we have a heart of gratitude. We have a heart of kindness. We want to help people. And guess what happens to us, my friends? Guess what happens when we're obedient? God blesses our obedience. He blesses our obedience. Hooray! This is good. This is a good thing. In Ruth 2, 12, it says, The Lord repay you for what you have done, and full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. God promises us that he will reward us. That's not why we do it, though. We do it because we want to. We do it because he loved us first. We do it because he's given us so much. All we want to do is give back to him. And how do we give back to God? By giving back to one another. By giving back to the kingdom. By giving back to friends. By giving back to relatives. By giving back to neighbors. By giving back to co-workers. Whoever, whoever, wherever you see an opportunity that you can. All right? We give back. Our Father loves to bless givers when givers, when, when we give with a pure heart and a thankful heart. In other words, when we give unselfishly, not seeking anything in return. I'm not seeking anything in return. I'm just giving because why? Because the Word of God tells me to do it. That's it. It's good enough for me. Whatever happens out of that, that's fine. You wreck my stuff, that's okay. It's all right. God will replace it. Don't matter. You see what I mean? We, we worry too much about, we, we hang on too tightly to what it is that God has given us. And we need to do this. There it is. Lord, you gave it to me. Now, allow me to use it whatever way you want me to. Okay? And that can be scary. Because we don't like losing our stuff, right? We like to hang on to our stuff like this. But God is saying, no, this is what I want. Hold on to it like this. And then guess what happens? Guess what happens? When we give to bless the kingdom of God to advance in whatever way, even if it's the smallest, simplest way, what happens? God advances us. He advances us. He brings us just a little bit higher in our understanding and in our relationship with him. And then guess what? You start to become, he starts to become more evident in your life. Ye, other people start to see him wherever you go. All right? Because, you're, because they look at you, when they look at you, they're not just seeing you. They're seeing him. When I, when I looked at the worship team, as I'm worshiping God, I'm praising God and I'm thanking him. Because when I'm, when I'm watching Dave and I'm watching everybody up there, I'm seeing, I'm seeing Jesus. Because Jesus has given you everything that you've got, all your talents. And what is he going to do as you keep going up there? He's going to keep blessing you and blessing you and blessing you, Dave. He's going to keep blessing you. And pretty soon, you're going to be too big for this church. And you're going to go to another church. And then we're going to be bitter and we're going to be angry. <laughs> and we're going to have to deal with that. Dang. 
You see, this is what God does. He blesses us. He blesses us because he, he wants to bless us. But all we have to do first is say, yes, use me, Lord. Use whatever I got. Use it. And you know what? He just advances us. He says, hey, that was really good. I'm glad you gave that up. Here's, here's some more. Now see what you can do with that. You know, and that's what God does. That's the kind of God we serve. In Luke 6, 38, it says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap for the measure you use. All right? It will be measured to you. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. In 2 Corinthians 9.11, it says, You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which though us, through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Thanksgiving. Guess what? You give, you get a heart of thanksgiving. You become thankful to God because he just keeps giving us, not because he gives us more, but he does. He just, he just supplies everything that we need. Which brings me to attitudes, okay? Let's talk about attitudes for a minute. What does God say about attitudes? Well, I'll tell you, he says a whole bunch about attitudes, all right? There is scripture upon scripture that instructs us concerning our attitudes in life, all right? You'd almost think that God was, took our attitude very seriously, all right? And I'm telling you, he does, all right? Philippians 4, 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, all right, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, remember that last part, all right? This scripture right here explains why so many people are depressed and dealing with mental health issues. And I'm just saying it like it is, okay? Like, I, I'm tired of skirting around the, the, this problem, all right? This is a huge problem. It's a huge problem in the church, and it's a huge problem in the world. But you know what? It doesn't have to be a huge problem in the church. It doesn't have to be, and it, nor should it be. Why? Because we have access to the healer, all right? We have access to every good thing that we need in life. All we need to do is get into the Word of God and start reading what the Scripture says about our health and our wellness and our mind, and, what, and we will see transformation. And you know what? It won't come, though, just because you read one Scripture, you just open up the Bible and you read one scripture and you say, okay, Lord, bring it on. No, it doesn't work like that. It works by reading scripture over and over and over again and getting it into your heart and into your mind and into your soul and into your spirit. And then what happens? And all of a sudden you start to think differently. You start to not look at the things that you've been looking at, all right, and, and watching the movies that you've been watching and doing the other things that you've been doing and whatever, and you start getting into the Word of God, and guess what? Your life starts to be transformed. You start to transform. Your, God transforms your life. This is an awesome thing. You guys should be saying hallelujah, man. You guys should be excited. I don't know. Okay, I'll be excited for you. That's all right. Man, God does things. He changes things. He'll change your problems. He'll change the things in your life that needs to be changed. All you got to do is trust in him. Just trust in him. I'm not saying that health issues aren't real. I know they're real. I'm saying that the word of God is alive and it's active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges, through, it judges thoughts and attitudes and attitudes of the heart and is sharper than any two-edged sword. And that's in Hebrews 4.12, if you don't believe me, okay? That's, read it over and over again. What does it say? Like, we, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm, I'm saying that the Word of God is more than capable 
more than capable of cutting through all, of, all forms of depression and mental health issues in your life. All forms. I believe it. I believe it. Depression and mental health issues are real, but they are byproducts of what we're focused on. They are byproducts of what we're focused on. If we're, e- we're either focused on the Word of God or we're not. Okay? We're either focused on the Word of God or we're not. It's one or the other. All right? And if you're not, you'll be focused on, guess what? You. That's what you're going to be focused on. You. And that's really what mental health is. Mental health is a, is a basically, it's like when we become so self-absorbed in our own mind, in our own self, that it just, it consumes us. It consumes us. And I'm not saying that there isn't spirits attached to this. There is. But we let them in. All right? And spirits, I have already said this, demons are easy to deal with. All we got to do is get them out. And then once we get them out, what do we do? Keep them out. By changing your life. By getting into scripture. By changing the way you think. And the, th- and, and, and the things you watch and the things you do. And we replace it with the things that are good for us, not the things that are bad for us. Self-focus is where it starts. That's where we start to spiral downwards. And if you're not focused on the Word of God, it's impossible to worship God with a grateful heart. Truly, with a, with a submitted grateful heart. Okay, You will become hypersensitive in everything that happens to you. And that's even if you occasionally open the word of God, you won't see it. All right? Because there's something, there's an element that's missing. All right? And that element is repentance. All right? I'm just saying it the way it is, guys. I'm just telling you the truth of the word of God. All right? If you're in that area, you need to repent. You, that's the first thing that we need to do is repent. Because when we repent... That's when we start to change. It's in a spirit of humility. If that's you, you need to bring your pride to the foot of the cross. You need to lay it there. And then you need to simply repent to God. Receive the forgiveness that Christ has already forgiven you for. Okay? You receive it, but the repentance has to come first. Because when we genuinely repent... For our turning away from God through our own self-worship, and that's what it is. When we are focused on us and not God, it is it's self-worship. That that's that's just simply what it is. All right. We become the focus and God is not. All right? We become the focus and God is not. When we genuinely repent, that's when God says, Okay, all right. Now I can work with this. Now I can, I can start to transform this vessel into the likeness of Christ. And we can start doing things for the kingdom of God because we're focused on God. And that's where we need to be. And the word of God becomes alive and it becomes active and it becomes sharper than a two-edged sword. And God starts to cut through the rot and the disease that it, and the stinking thinking of our lives. And he starts to transform us. And it stings and it hurts. Okay? But guess what? Guess what happens? We start to say things like, Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for doing this. Thank you for not leaving me where I was in the pit. Thank you for not leaving me in this pit of despair. Thank you for using all of those people in my life that have hurt me so much. Thank you for that. Thank you. Because I see what you're doing in it. Thank you for your promises. Thank you, Lord. Open my eyes to your word, Lord. Open it. And help me to see you in everything and everything 
everything, everything that happens in my life and everything I do, help me to see you. Then all of a sudden, the word of God starts to become alive. It starts to become alive right in the pages. It comes, it comes alive in your life. It becomes alive in the way that you think, in the way that you act. You even start to treat people differently. You start to, and it starts by thinking about them differently. You start to see them the way God sees them. You see, there's so much that we have to look forward to when we, when we surrender to him, when we give everything to him. Then, like I said, all of a sudden, it becomes alive and active. And then you start, you can start to praise him with a grateful heart. All right? Now, I'm going to read some scriptures to you, and I paraphrase them, all right? So I want you to just know that. So if you're, not, if you're reading them along with me somewhere else, you're going to say, well, okay, you'll know why I changed them. I want to make these into more declarations than I do just scriptures. These are going to be declarations. This is what happens to us. And whatever you do in the word or deed, everything is done in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thessalonians, that's in Colossians 3.17. And then 1 Thessalonians 5.16-18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. We give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in, in Christ Jesus for us. Uh, Psalm 95.2. We come into, the, into his presence with thanksgiving, making a joyful noise with, with, with him, to him with songs of praise. And then Colossians 6.7. We become rooted and built up in him, and establish our faith, abounding in thanksgiving. Abounding in thanksgiving. All right? And in Colossians 3.15, And we let the peace of God rule in our hearts, in which we were called in one, one body, and we're thankful to our Lord. And so here's the thing. And I'm going to end with this, guys. Are we focused on what we have or what we don't have? This, is, this Thanksgiving, I want you to think about that. Are you focused on what we have or on what we don't have? All right? Psalm 28, verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to him. No matter what. No matter what. Okay? We give thanks to him. Psalm 69, 30 says, I will praise the name of God with song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. No matter what. No matter what. Okay? This is what thanksgiving is all about, my friends. It's not about the turkey. It's not about the ham. It's not about the pumpkin pie. Now, it might be about the strawberry rhubarb pie, um, because that's really the best pie, all right? Um, but it's about him. It's about God. It's about him and what he's done, all that he's done for us. It's about wanting him more than wanting anything else in this life on earth. Why? Because this here isn't what it's all about. It's all about where we're going. It's all about being with him. All right? It's about being with our father. He's got a plan, man, for our lives. All right? I didn't mean that to rhyme. It just came out like that. All right? Colossians 3, 15, 17. It says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Be thankful with a grateful heart. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whenever you do, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 
All right? So when you're spending time with your family and your friends today, remember him. Remember Christ. Remember what Jesus did for you. Okay? And be thankful for all that God has done so far in your life. And be thankful for everything that he's doing right now, even if it hurts, even if it stings, even if it is uncomfortable. All right? And be thankful for all that he's going to do in your life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this this Thanksgiving weekend. We thank you, Lord, uh, for everything that you do in our life. We thank you, Father, for the, the hard times, the good times. We thank you, Lord, for uh, just for everything, Lord, because we know everything comes from you. Thank you, Father, for everything we have. Thank you, Lord, for, for even the things we don't have. Lord, it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever, you, whatever your will is for our life, Lord, we, just, we, 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 we embrace it. Father, and we thank you for where it is that you have us. And Lord, wherever it is, whether we're happy, whether we're sad, whether we're, we're, we have a lot or whether we have a little, Lord, I, I just bless it. And I just ask you, Lord, to put our heart in the right place. Help us, Lord, to come into that place of submission to you. Help us, Lord, to know uh, that you care for us and you do have a plan, Lord, and that it's not about the stuff. It's not about anything else but you. So, Lord, we thank you. We just thank you, and we bless you, and we praise you, and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.